Ah, summer holidays, summer school holidays, are they an epic adventure set against the backdrop of an endless summer or a child-minding, wallet-draining, leave-sucking nightmare stretching in some cases up to seven weeks? National List MP Nicola Willis reckons shortening the break could ease the financial strain on stressed working parents and she's working on a private members bill to get the law change moving. In a moment we'll hear from Nicola Willis but first our cameraman Simon Rogers visited Christchurch's Margaret Mahi playground to ask caregivers if the current summer break is too long. I think they should be shorter. Yeah, I, as a working parent, my husband works. Um, it's expensive to put them in childcare, um, to feel like the children are kind of getting the necessary kind of entertainment they need, the education they need. Um, and when we are at home with them, because we use all our annual leave for the summer holidays, um, you know, we just don't have the finances to um, take them out on lots of recreational trips. So it's a struggle for us. I've got a, a daughter with a lot of additional needs, um, registered disabled, so uh, often mainstream child carers aren't able to look after her, um, which kind of makes it even more of a challenge for us. Um, yeah, I, I think you know another a week shorter, maybe even two weeks shorter, would be absolutely perfect. Uh, I think the kids need that break, to be honest. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit either way, really. Well, their father's actually looking after them, so their mother works at the moment. But yeah, they, they're not really reliant on things like that, whereas some families are. I can understand them wanting the holidays to be a bit less. I think they should be longer. <laughs> Same with me. And, no. And, and I guess, yeah, what, what else do you do? How do you organise childcare? What's going on? We, do, well, we are the childcare. <laughs> yeah, because uh, these are our grandchildren, so we look after the grandchildren all the holidays. Our parents are and at we work. used to always go up to Tauranga, up to Papa Moran's Day, because they had a beach house up there, but that's since been sold. So we just do local activities. Oh. National's Nicola Willis is a mother of four, including three school-aged children. She came into our parliamentary studio earlier today and I asked her to lay out her case for changing the institution that is the summer holiday. Look, I love the summer holidays and I think family time together is really important and children enjoy the time off. But it's also a real stress on families once you get into about week six uh, because they're trying to juggle often full-time work and childcare. Uh, most people only get four weeks annual leave. There's 12 weeks of school holidays in the year. So families have to stretch to cover it. And I hear of people not finding school holiday programs that work for their kid, having to spend hundreds of extra dollars each week to have their children looked after. And there's also research showing that children's learning progress uh, can go backwards during this time. So I'm starting a conversation and saying, do working parents, do parents in New Zealand think it might be time to shorten the summer break? So what do you reckon? Shave off a couple of weeks or what? Oh, look, I really want to hear from parents on this. I want to hear about their experiences. But you are a parent. How they manage this time of year. Yeah, yeah I'm you a are a parent. So what do you reckon? What are your thoughts? One or two weeks So, so my off? thoughts are, look, first, I think it would be great if more schools made their premises available for school holiday programs. I think that could relieve some pressure. And I think if the holidays were a week shorter, that would be good. Um, you know, you look at Australia, they have about 200 days of school a year. In New Zealand, we're about 190. So shaving off a few days wouldn't have us too far out uh, when you compare us with other countries and I think could make a real difference for parents under pressure. Okay, so there's a few things there. If you went down to just 11 weeks in, uh, holiday a year, got rid of one week altogether, what do you reckon the teachers would think of that? Look, I want to hear from teachers on this. I know that teachers spend that 12 weeks when children aren't in the classroom. A lot of it they spend working. They deserve a proper break too, and I absolutely support that. But my question is, should they be spending weeks of time doing administration, planning and preparation, or would they prefer to spend that time in front of the classroom? So when are they supposed to do their planning and preparation if you were to take one of those weeks away? Look, if they, I think within a 12 week, uh, within an 11 week period, uh, teachers could manage uh, some time off for themselves, some time for planning, some time for preparation, some time for assessment, and potentially a bit more time in front of the classroom. So do they get too long a holiday break, teachers? Do they get too many holidays at the moment? No, look, that's not where I'm coming from. What I'm concerned about is the stories I hear from parents who are really feeling the pressure at this time of year, who are finding the juggle a bit much, particularly those people who don't have flexible work, who aren't able to work from home, who don't have friends and family available to help out, and who feel really stretched by childcare costs. It's those concerns that are motivating me, and they're what I want to address. So would you have the kids come back a week earlier, basically, on that scenario? I think so. 
I think so, but I want to hear from people on that subject. I've already had feedback this morning from someone suggesting, well, maybe uh, they should be at school right up to Christmas because that's the time of year that's particularly stressful for parents at work. Look, there are different suggestions that will mm. be out there. I want to hear people's feedback. Either way, if you are taking away a week, you're making the learning term longer. And that's kind of why we went to four terms, wasn't it? Because we were saying that while pushing kids um, through 11, 12 weeks of learning in a single stint meant that teachers teachers were tired, kids were tired, they weren't, they weren't taking in all the information. You're, just, you're going backwards then, aren't you, if you go back to that? Look, there's no question, children need time off, they need a break, uh, and at the moment they do get that in school holidays. We also have good public holidays in New Zealand, which mean that children get time off. What the research tells us, uh, and Tom Nicholson from, uh, from Auckland has spoken about this, is that children's learning progress can really slide downhill when the break is as long as six weeks, because it's just a long uh, time away from the classroom and the literacy progress that could be occurring. And sometimes teachers are spending a lot of time trying to get kids back up to speed after that period. But so don't, the question parents is about the have a degree of, don't parents have a degree of responsibility there? Absolutely parents have a degree of responsibility and the parents I speak to try very hard to have enriching activities for their children during the holidays but the reality is that in many households in New Zealand the TV is on because parents are trying to work uh, and many parents do have their children in school holiday programs and they won't necessarily be sitting down and doing maths exercises with them. That's just real life. So rather, here's an idea, rather than shorten the school holiday break, why not extend uh, the annual leave, the minimum annual leave for workers? Oh look, I've had people uh, make that suggestion and I think the reality with that uh, is that we'd need to have employers and people on board and that could be very expensive and I think all of us fundamentally want to see wages growing, we want to see the economy more productive so that wages can grow and my concern would be that simply extending annual leave could detract from those goals. But there's costs involved in what you want to do as well. If you're going to put teachers back into the classroom earlier, if you are suggesting that we open up schools and have holiday programs, um, and if the school is actually going to be operating a week longer in a year, that costs money too, doesn't it? Look, potentially. Uh, we're talking about about a 3% increase in the school year. And what's uh, that, you're also what's looking that in real at money, do you think, Nicola? What do you think that would cost in real money? Uh, well, when you look at um, the current operational grant, um, that would have some costs that we'd have to look at carefully. But you'd also be saving money because you would reduce the work and income subsidies that are provided during this period. And I'd wager that there would be some productivity gains as well because parents would be able to better contribute to the workplace during Have you this done time. the numbers? So the, the costs are absolutely something I want to look at, Lisa, and they need to be part of this conversation and right, need to be considered. Right, but you haven't got that far yet. No, I haven't. And, and look, this is not national party policy. Let me be very clear. This is a conversation I want to start because I've had a lot of working parents say to me they're finding this time of year stressful. I want to be brave and ask the question and I want to hear people's feedback. It's important that we're in touch with working mm. families and the realities of their lives and this is a subject that keeps coming up. Okay, so have you talked to the teachers directly? Have you talked to any no, of the teachers? No, I've talked unions? to some people who teach uh, and they have told me that, th that they have seen children um, slip back over this period. But not to the uh, unions, I, you haven't floated no, this and with I, the unions. and I okay. absolutely intend to sit down and talk with them and I look forward to those conversations. Um, they can be very constructive, I'm sure. As you point out, this would be a um, would be a private members bill. So, mm -hmm. have you discussed this with your own education spokesperson, Nikki Kay? Because in the past, when changes to the school year have been discussed, she's been very clear it would need significant support from parents. So, what does she think of your idea? Absolutely. So Nikki Kay, um, I've talked to about this proposal and she supports me starting this conversation. Uh, we want to hear from parents about what they think uh, and, and Simon Bridges supports me having this conversation. Uh, look, the reality of policy formation in the National Party is that we listen to New Zealanders about the issues that concern them, we take on their ideas and feedback and then we'll be developing a manifesto for 2020. This is a real concern in many communities and I want to hear people's ideas about how we address it. What do you fancy your chances are of getting a change? Oh look, we'll see. Um, I'm getting some really supportive emails. I had an email from someone this morning saying, look, I'm a Labour Party supporter, but you're really speaking to me and my concern. It's been a very difficult time for our family. And I think that there are lots of families out there who share that view. Uh, equally, I think we all have a nostalgic and warm view of the great Kiwi break. Uh, I share that view. I love the time with my kids during this time. So it's a matter of balancing uh, those two things.